Yeah, when you first started, what did you come in with? What was the issue? Well, when I first came in here, I came in with, uh, I was told I had MRI that it was facet uh, arthropathy, I believe they said, and I had been going to two other chiropractors and uh, two MDs, and I was in excruciating pain, and I was getting no release, and I was, I was starting to think I was going to avoid surgery, so I was getting pretty desperate. And then I, <laughs> magically, I thought, hey, the internet. And I Googled The magic it, of the internet. Boom, and you were really close, and I came here, and you, you said you had a treatment for that, mm -hmm. and that brought me here, and it's been going great. Yeah, so what was, what does facet's arthropathy feel like, if nobody knows what it feels like? Like, how would you describe it? Wow, uh, I would say that it uh, phases in and out of ec extreme pain. It's a pinching. Uh, that goes down your leg, and uh, there's times where it's so sharp and, and such a vibrant, thick pain that it would take me 25 minutes to get up my stairs to get to my bedroom, and uh, up one I, flight, up one flight okay. and I was just wincing and almost in tears uh, when it first started. And there's other times it's always with you. It's a pinching. It's kind of like a sciatic pain. I've been told it's it's um, called um, it's. Uh, it mimics sciatica, and there's a word for that, <laughs> and I can't think of the word. Yeah, uh, it's it's like sciatic-like. So everybody who has facet syndrome always thinks they have sciatica, right? Because they're like, I have sciatica, and it's going down my leg. And you do the MRIs, and it's not sciatica, and then right. people go, but I'm not faking it. But other things can cause symptoms go that go down the leg. Right. That, that's the whole point. I, I have some, one of the doctors thought at first it was a bulging disc. Okay, uh, that's and, right. Right, a bulging disc, and uh, finally I had to get an MRI done, and that's yeah. when we kind of put a name to it, right. which was very helpful, because then that allowed me to Google this Well, you Google the right thing. thing, because one of the challenges with Google is Google, Dr. Google doesn't know what is wrong with you. Right. So if you just type in pain down the legs, Right. It's going to show sciatica. Right. And if it shows sciatica, the first people on Google are the surgery right. sites advertising, come have surgery with us. So you think you're going to have surgery, so you go down that rabbit hole right. thinking, oh, I guess I have to have surgery. And it turns out they never even looked at your MRI. Right. Because Dr. Google can't. They don't look at and, and they certainly don't explain it to you. Well, they don't explain it either, and then they can't examine you because ultimately the way that you know you have facet syndrome is really not just an MRI, but through the exam. So typically, and this happened to you, is typically a person with sciatica won't bend forward real well, but they could bend backwards and it relieves their pain. Hmm. Yeah. Facet syndrome, I don't know if you remember this, but yeah. facet syndrome, we had you bend forward, Right. it helped your pain, but bending backward aggravated your it pain. It was the opposite. It was the saying. opposite. It was actually the opposite, right. So there's your clue. That's how you know it's the set. Right. And then what we did with you is we not only had you bend backwards, but then we did other provocative tests to say, well, which facet is it? So I had you bend to the left, bend to the right, I put my thumb on the facets, right. and I basically jammed my thumb into your facets right. until I found the one, right. and I said, oh, that's it, it's on the left, and you so know, that, that's how you do it. What else was very helpful was uh, not many people, even when I knew what it was, and I'm looking at the medical book and the doctor said, okay, use that term, nobody explains oh, what yeah. it is. And so you have your model, and yeah. it's also, God, it's really a relief uh, mentally to just have a picture of what is going on with your own body, trying to understand yeah. where is this pain coming from? Oh, I see what's going on. And that helps me to kind of also understand what it is you're doing with your treatments. I understand right. what you're trying to do with me. Right. One of the biggest frustrations is when they do a biopsy on Friday and say, we'll let you know next week. That's the worst weekend of your life because you have no idea what the problem is. So when a person doesn't know what the problem is or doesn't understand it, right. there's a lot of mental stress that goes on. And you think, am I crazy? Am I, you know, people think you're faking it. And so the reality is once you really understand like what facet arthritis is or facet right. arthropathy, then you go, oh, well, that adjustment makes sense then. Right. And that treatment makes sense. And then it's like a relief. Sometimes you see people, their shoulders actually go, right. oh, wow, all of it finally somebody explained it. Yeah, you know? all the tumblers fit together and you just go, 
okay, now that fits everything I'm feeling and, and the pain, it and it all matches, and it just it feels like a coherent. This is the right thing. Yeah. So we've hit it. All Finally. right. So let's do it. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run this machine down the spine to see if there's any type of reading today. So now at the bottom, the needle goes to the right, not very much, right at the bottom. Now the reason it goes to the right is because this is more of a chronic problem. Usually an acute problem will have some type of swelling. See if I just do that, it goes right there, right there. So I'm just going to make a little tiny mark right there. So if the needle goes to the right and their symptoms are on the left, that's usually indicating a chronic problem. If the needle goes to the left and their problem is on the left, it usually indicates it's more of a new problem or what's called an acute problem. Those are just fancy words for saying it's either a fresh or old. Right, right. <laughs> what I'm going to do is I'm going to place my fingers right on that joint. I'm going to have you bend to the left and then to the right okay. so we can assess how it's moving. Okay. So. And what I'm doing is I'm feeling each vertebrae as you bend so I can see how the spine moves. And we want the spine to move well. We don't want it to move abnormal. So now I'm going to place my fingers on the other side and I'm going to bend to the right. So that's L4 and then I'm going to assess L3. There you go. And now I'm going to go down to the side of the spine and feel the tension over the facets. And there is not a lot of swelling right now, which is good because usually, you'll, really good. yeah, you'll push on it. Usually, you'll feel like you'll feel almost like a swelling in the in the joints. And when you first came in, there was a big, for lack of a better explanation, it was almost like it was pushing in a water balloon. And now it's not there. That's so awesome. Because I'm, good I'm thing. feeling much better. Yeah, you're feeling good, which is good. All right, so let's do this. So you're not going to fall, but come a little closer to the edge of the table. There you go. Okay. So do you think swimming would be all right? Uh, are you a good swimmer? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, swimming is good. The problem I have with people telling them to swim is they don't like swimming. Oh, <laughs> and some people, you know, yeah. they, they, they're not swimming from one end of the pool to the other. They're basically floundering and drowning from one pool to the other. So if you like swimming, it's a great exercise okay. for your spine. That's great. But if I, tell, if I tell someone who's never swam before, the best exercise is swimming, they're like, yeah, well, I'm not buying a bathing suit. Uh, right. You know? So I'm going to go to the, the fifth lumbar vertebrae here. I'm going to get my fingers on it and I'm going to stretch you. Okay? Okay. So here we go. Just kind of let it relax there. Perfect. That was good. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to do some of that trigger point stuff okay. on the side. So go ahead and lie down on your stomach. Some people either love this or hate this. What do you you okay with it? I am totally okay with You're it. okay with it, okay. Yeah. I feel like it's you know, it's doing what it's supposed to do. It's kind of massaging in there. Yeah. Breaking up things and getting it for lack of a medical term, blue duck and that thing yeah. kind of doing its thing. Actually that is a medical term. We're lubing it up. <laughs> Well, we're bringing it in perfectly uh, in for a landing for my Italy trip. I'm feeling so much better. When are you going to Italy? On uh, the 26th, I mean, so I'm here the day before. I think that's the Wednesday. The 26th next week? Yeah. You're going to Italy? Yeah. Why don't you stay here? I'll go to <laughs> Italy. <laughs> I was seriously concerned about the walking, but... Uh, Actually, um, the only challenge with the facet is walking downhill. So when you, if you're walking up and down a pretty steep hill, 
here's what I want you to do. When you start walking downhill, but kind of tighten your abs a little bit, and that'll prevent you from arching and jamming the facets. Okay. When you walk uphill, you probably won't have any pain in your back. Downhill, tight Downhill will probably aggravate your back a little bit. Okay. So when you're walking downhill, if you just kind of uh, tighten your abs a little bit, like, like you're holding your breath, okay. it'll kind of, the muscles will wrap, or, that wrap around your back will tighten and kind of protect your back. Okay, good tip. Okay. You want to bring me back a cycling cap? That's already on my list. All right. <laughs> Asking for a bicycle would be too much <laughs> because the cost of the bike on the plane would be. A nice Italian bike. I would need a nice Italian bike. <laughs> yeah. yeah we'll, we'll start with it. Have, have you been there before? No, never have. Never? Never. How long are you going for? Three weeks. Wow. Yeah. I call that the, t the tenderizer. That, yeah, you call it the tenderizer. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to just use this, the laser on the facet, and then we'll be all set. Is that a cold laser? Is it's considered cold a cold laser? laser. They Technically, they call it a non-thermal, okay. <laughs> which, which no. basically means it doesn't produce heat. Right. So some lasers, like the one they use for LASIK surgery, for, for your eyes, that's considered a thermal laser. So what happens is they put it in your eyes, and they literally burn parts of the back of your eye so that you could see. Oh. It changes the structure. This one, no matter how long it's on there, will not produce heat. Huh. So if something does not produce heat, technically it's cold. So the, the term is called cold laser. Okay. But that's, if you Google it, um, usually it's considered a non-thermal laser. And what it does, it helps reduce um, swelling for one. And also what it does, it kind of gets circulation going in there without creating heat. Right. Which, see, when people get inflamed, heat is generally bad. And so what it does, it helps kind of speed up healing. Okay. So. Now, uh, 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 I have uh, infrared sauna. That's, good that's, a little, that's a little different, but it's the same. It, it, that'll produce a little bit of heat. You can come on up. Right. Okay. Have you noticed that when you use it, it gets a little warm? Oh, gosh, yeah. Yeah, well. Gosh, yeah, is generally bad if something's swollen. Like a baseball player, they throw nine innings. Right. What is the the baseball player? By the way, has the best orthopedic surgeons, chiropractors, trainers, and what do they do? They put their elbow in. They got to do the ice. Ice. Right. With all that education. Right. What do they do? Ice. So, oh. so, so the only challenge is if something's inflamed. Like if you if you sprain your ankle or you sprain your back. And you use the infrared; it'll feel good when it's on, but then the next day it hurts worse because it you you puffed it up, you increased it. Okay. Right. So that's when you want to use ice. All right. But other than that, like right now, it's not swollen in your back. You could use it. It's wonderful. Okay. Good. Excellent. All right. Roll Thank you.